Hello, welcome to episode number five. I'm getting started with attributes and bobs inside of Houdini series. And in this one, we'll be talking about how to use the attribute ramps, understanding how we can control values that we get from bobs, and we can hand manually hand tweak them or automate uh, some sort of uh, animation using that. And of course, as you can see, we will be writing a little bit of an expression so that we can actually have our ramp animated. And uh, as per usual, everything will be super tweakable. All the setups are, you know, can be as simple or as complex as you want them. So that's that. So before we begin, I just want to say that if you're interested in supporting the channel, the best way would be to actually subscribe to the Patreon. But it's not mandatory if you don't want to, just, you know, it's fine. Uh, anyway, without further ado, let's actually start creating our setup. And I will delete everything and we'll drop the geometry nodes. Don't forget to save, right? So anyway, uh, let's start. Uh, drop a grid and of course, uh, let's say one by one. Whoops, <laughs> one by one. Uh, rows will be two and columns will be, let's say, 50. And of course, I want to increase the length. So it's kind of like a little bit more visual, a little bit obvious what we're doing. So anyway, uh, let's drop the attribute VOP and we will do the poly extrusion after that. And of course, if you remember, the extrusion actually works on the primitives, not on points. So that means that our attribute VOP should be running over not on points, but primitives, of course. All right, so uh, jump inside attribute VOPs, double click or just hit enter. And what we're gonna do is actually create an attribute that will be exporting as something to control the amount of extrusion down the road. We have to somehow calculate something to control our ramp. Uh, what we're gonna do is get the number of our primitives, right? So from zero in our case to 48. And we will actually divide the number of the primitive by total primitive number. So we have values from zero to one. Let me just showcase. So we get the divide and we get the number of primitives. That's the total number of primitives, right? It's actually input number two and the primitive number. So here's how it's gonna work. If we divide zero by 50, we'll get zero. If we divide something like 25 by 50, we'll get 0 0.5, well, half of it. And of course, if we divide something close to 50 by 50, we'll get something close to one. And of course, let's just preview the result. We get the divider into the CD. Uh, actually, another way of previewing it would be to just hit the X and there will be the visualize node dropped here. So that's pretty useful. And you will see that everything is black. Why is that? If you watch the previous video, you will know that in order to have the float as a result of division of two integers, so basically right now we're dividing anything by, uh, we are dividing the primitive numbers by number of primitives, but uh, Houdini thinks that we want the result as an integer and the integer result will be either a zero or one or a two or something else. To have float, we have to convert the integer to float and that will make it understand that what we need is, well, as a result, we need a float. You'll see it goes from zero to one in the red because the visualize gets our visualizations in the red color. Of course, we can delete this visualizer, a visualizer connected to the CD, and you will see that indeed we have something going from zero as in black. Actually, uh, somehow I connected the number of points. We actually need the number of primitives, of course. And you will see that indeed it goes from black to white, from zero to one. All right, next step, uh, I will actually do the export of this attribute. It will call binds export connected here and we'll name it, um, let's say extruder, just for the sake of us remembering what's going on. In this case, uh, you know, sometimes uh, you might come across some tutorials that will actually indeed say that uh, you can 
uh, you can actually do it by the color. However, if somewhere down here, you will have the color attributes overriding it, as in the primitive, you will see that uh, it kind of destroys the whole effect. So I wouldn't personally recommend writing here the color attributes. I would actually say that you can use it for the previews. It, it will not hurt, obviously, but for actual extrusion, you'll be, uh, you'll be better off explicitly writing the attribute that you need. And of course, if you now drop the color and make it uh, whichever color you want, even from here, you'll see that the color changes, but our extruder distance does not change. So there's that. Anyway, I'll leave it on uh, just for visualization purposes for now. And of course, next up, we now want to drop a attribute ramp to actually control how our in this kind of like staircase is being controlled. How do we do that? Well, as the name suggests, we need to drop the ramp parameter. Here it is. I'll move it to the side. And of course, this ramp will be color and this ramp will be color as well. And we have the inputs. And uh, obviously, as you can see right now, everything stays kind of the same. However, if we now go outside to our geometry and see, we'll have now a way to control our staircase and that kind of like already working. However, I want it to be a bit different uh, since we're not actually controlling the color itself, but we are controlling the float as a result of our division that we had previously. I would say we need the ramp type not to be RGB color ramp, but spline ramp, and it says float. So here it is, uh, for whatever reason it destroyed itself, but it will go back just fine if we go back outside to our geometry. And let's, oops, uh, let's maximize it a little bit. You will see that indeed everything works as expected. All right, so next up, uh, the interpolation, as you can see, we can uh, set to, for example, Catmull ROM, so it's looks a little bit more smooth. This one, again, cut more ROM. And now we can just left click here, start moving our things around and everything looks and works just fine. Um, finally, I just wanna show you how I create, by the way, you just can uh, select this pin, you can uh, press delete or you just can right click delete Oops, right click. Okay, right click, delete. All right, that worked. Um, and of course, um, let's see how can we actually animate the whole thing. Uh, we can just move it uh, left and right, but in our case, I think it will be more interesting if we animate the value. And you will see that we actually can, we can write some sort of a simple rule to animate our things right here. So for the value, so here we can write sign dollar $t, let's say multiplied by 30, press enter. And indeed, if we now animate the thing, I'll just uh, hitting the up arrow key to animate it, not just, uh, you know, press this button, you'll see that play up arrow, that's kind of faster. Uh, you can pause by hitting the up arrow, you can go back to the uh, very first frame by holding control up. So that's really useful. Uh, anyway, so, as you will see for now that we animate a little bit here and there. So you'll see that it actually goes from zero to one and it goes to the negative one because that's the sign function for you basically, right? Uh, however, we can improve that by basically uh, writing this uh, divided by two plus 0 0.6. So it never goes below zero and it's some, it hovers around somewhere from 0.1 to 1.1. So let's see what we have. And indeed, the values are as expected. You will see that it goes to 0.1 and goes back again. Of course, we can uh, increase the speed of the amplitude change if we increase the dollar $t multiplied by 60. As an example, anyway, the whole point I'm trying to make is that you can actually uh, do anything you want. You can increase or decrease the amount of 
uh, you know, points. You can write uh, different equations or different ways to control your values here or anywhere really. So there is that. Um, basically what I'm saying is that you can actually uh, calculate simple ramps. In our case, it was extremely simple, so to speak, because the only thing we did is we divided the primitive number by the total number of primitives. Of course, we converted it again. Let me just showcase. We got the primitive number, divided it by prim number of primitives. And that resulted in zero to one results, which we then fed into the ramp that we use to control our extrusion. And that's the result. So hopefully you learn something new in this video and you like what you see. And of course, if you do, uh, hit the like button. And if you want to learn more about Houdini and attributes and Unreal Engine and many other things, really, we have a lot to cover. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And of course, if you have some ideas and suggestions, don't hesitate to leave the comment. I wish you have a good day. I hope to see you in the next video and goodbye.